Welcome to the Rewriting Naruto series part 43. This is a series of videos where I rewrite the Naruto series to make changes to improve the story for my personal taste. Guys, please like this video. Let's spread it on YouTube. Please, everybody liking the video right now. If you love your mom, you're gonna like this video, okay? Also, subscribe to this channel if you haven't and ring those notifications to make sure you always receive the rewrites. Let's get going. Three days have passed since Naruto fought Kakashi under some sort of mind control and foiled the attack of a mercenary army to the Leaf Village. Jiraiya miraculously survived a second Chidori impalement. Shizune used her healing resuscitation ritual for the second time that week and managed to mend a gaping hole in his lung. Sakura also recovered from the fight against Kakashi after a few days in the hospital. If it wasn't for her, healing Jiraiya right away after Kakashi attacked him, he would have died as well. No one knew exactly what happened that night or who was behind the attack. Naruto heard many different theories as to why Kakashi went crazy and an army of rogue bandits tried to invade the village. But Naruto suspected Danzo was behind everything. There was absolutely no proof to that claim. It was just a gut feeling, but a powerful one. He knew the Ambu was investigating the incident, but the entire army of mercenaries died, inflicted with some terrible corrosion jutsu that nobody could recognize. So the only real suspect they had was Kakashi. He was imprisoned, and Ibiki and Inuichi were interrogating him and searching every nook and cranny of his mind. <laughs> Naruto had some weird intel about the Anbu who warned him about the attack the night before it happened. He shared that information with the Bikin Noichi so they could conduct a better investigation. But when Inoichi tried to look into Naruto's mind and see what Naruto saw that night, when the Anbu approached him, his memories were scrambled and incoherent. Naruto remembered them just fine, but Inoichi couldn't gaze into them. Everything about it was strange. Inoichi said only an extremely powerful ninja would be able to scramble Naruto memories for outside investigators in such a potent way he wouldn't be able to reverse it but still allow Naruto to remember what he saw. This was unfortunate. Naruto had a terrible memory so he could only remember the Anbu mask was white and that he had a male calm voice which doesn't say a whole lot and maybe he was even using a transformation jutsu to make him completely impossible to discern so Inoichi and Ibiki had no luck identifying that particular Anbu among the entire contingent of the Anbu core. Still, well, it was thanks to that mysterious Anbu that Naruto didn't train the day of the attack, and so he had enough chakra to fight Kakashi and the mercenary army. Meaning that the Anbu was the reason why the damage wasn't as extensive as it could have been. Only one person died in the attack. A medic ninja that a Kakashi shadow clone killed after Naruto tackled the original through the hospital tower window. He felt bad about it, and again, he could never have anticipated Kakashi would try to kill Pervy Sage and attack them out of nowhere. Luckily, he was able to rescue all 
all the patients from the tower as it fell, and the projectiles that the army launched into the village didn't kill anyone. However, over a dozen people, civilians and ninjas were wounded. The story of what Naruto did that night spread like wildfire. People were talking about how the son of the fourth Hokage took on the legendary copy ninja, as well as 5,000 men by himself, not letting a single enemy set foot in the leaf village, while his chakra beamed bright yellow, just like the yellow flash. On a side note, a lot of people were confused or making very crazy theories about why Naruto was exuding yellow chakra last rewrite. It's just that Naruto has yellow chakra in the manga and this is a rewrite of the manga. So in that particular scene, Naruto was just using a lot of chakra, which meant the chakra became visible to create all those 5,000 shadow clones. The difference of how most leaf ninjas treated Naruto now was night and day from what it used to be. It was almost like Naruto had become one of them, finally. For the first time, Naruto felt he was a regular leaf shinobi, not a jinchuriki, a demon, a vessel. A sense of accomplishment and belonging grew in Naruto. He had protected the village and he was acknowledged by them. He felt sure he had taken an important step into becoming Hokage. He was also glad that the story of him defeating the army over overshadow the rumors about Hinata being imprisoned and in the root Ambu. Over the last three days since the attack, the Leaf Village didn't send any ninjas into new missions, and the ones who arrived back from missions into the village were commanded to stay put. Security all around the village was reinforced to prevent any other incidents in the absence of the Hokage, and the additional ninjas that didn't go on further missions would help in that regard. They all waited for Tsunari to arrive from her journey to the Land of Crystals, and Naruto trained his Uzumaki sealing jutsu with Yamato over those days. He had needed that jutsu to stop Kakashi and failed to produce the results he wanted when Kakashi was using his Mangekyo Sharingan ability. Luckily, Naruto still managed to break his sensei out of that mind control influence he was under, otherwise Pervy Sage could have died. But still, he had to master that sealing jutsu, which he worked hard for during those three days since the attack. Now Naruto waited close to the main leaf village gates. Shizune told him that they would arrive around sunset just after Naruto finished another training session, and he headed there straight from the training grounds. He wasn't there to talk to Granny Tonari, though he would certainly brief her about everything that happened during her absence. Rather, he was there to tell Kiba and Shino about Hinata. They were her former teammates, after all, and Naruto was the one who leaked the information about her. It would be better to tell them than to let them find things out through weird rumors. So Naruto waited to meet them at the gate. Naruto! Hey! One of those two guys that were always together said they were both serving as the gate guards. Naruto had no clue what their names were. Hey there! We heard you took care of an entire army, Naruto. You should leave some for us. <laughs> the other guy said. I mean, I was just... We're joking, Naruto. What you did was crazy. Cool as hell, but crazy. Karma told us everything about it. Karma? Who's Karma? Karma Hyuga. I thought he was with you when he took down the army. He told us what happened. Naruto remembered the Hyuga who joined them when he was heading towards the army. The Hyuga who had almost fought Naruto for punching Hiyashi's dad. The night of the Takeshijo. Oh, right, yeah. I'm just really glad I could help. The two guys nodded and continued their duty as guards. Half an hour passed, and Naruto finally heard shouts from the scouts on top of the wall. Lady Tsunade and her party have arrived! Once Tsunade, Shino, Kiba, and Anko stepped into the village, a small Ambu squadron surrounded them, and they began to brief Tsunade about the village's situation. She had received communications about the state of the village on their way back, but now she was getting an update and a more detailed report about what happened. Once the Ambu squadron dispersed, Naruto rushed to the Hokage's party. Tsunade saw him coming and smiled. Naruto, I'll get your full report tomorrow. Now I have to take a look at Jiraiya. I heard he's out of danger, but I want to make sure he'll be fully recovered soon. Yeah, sure, Granny Tsunade, but I'm here to talk to Kiba and Shino, actually. Tsunade nodded. She and Uncle laughed, leaving Naruto with a two. Naruto, I heard that you took on a whole army. That's just crazy. Holding off Kakashi is far more impressive than that. But what did you want to tell us, Naruto? We also had something to tell you, but Lady Tanati, she told us not to. She wants to tell you on her own. Got it. I guess she'll tell me tomorrow then. But what I have to tell you is not good. Not good at all. Naruto then told them everything he knew about Hinata and her relationship with Danzo and the Rudambu. Everything that happened in the Land of Whirlpools, as well as how she answered Naruto's questions when he infiltrated the Leaf Prison. Kiba got outraged. He tried to interrupt Naruto several times, but Naruto shut him up and could 
continued to tell the story. Shino remained silent the entire time. He was so stiff that his body resembled a statue. When Naruto finished telling them about the Take Shijo and how he revealed the secret to the entire Hugo clan, Kiba snapped. This can't be true! Hinata would never! She, she's being controlled or something! I thought that too, but they did all types of tests on her. Donzo, that... Bastard, he brainwashed her. Shino finally moved. He leaned against the wall of the village, looking extremely exhausted. All of a sudden, it's my fault. I should have noticed. I should have been there for her. I should have done something about it. I felt it was strange when she quit going on missions. I even asked her about it, but she gave me reasonable explanations. I just thought she needed more time to process her mother's death. But I should have been more thorough. I was incompetent, careless. I mean, it wasn't our fault. What could we have done instead? She fooled everyone. We we could have been better friends. Shino felt a cold steel blade pierce his heart. He didn't know how to be a good friend. But even with all his efforts, it was never enough. Hinata had been his teammate for so long, and yet he couldn't help her when she needed him most. I also couldn't do anything. I am also guilty, Shino. You shouldn't carry all that burden. Thanks, Naruto. I mean, we have to go talk to Kurnai sensei right, Shino? Naruto realized he had forgotten about Hinata's old sensei. It didn't even occur to him to go talk to her. Do you think she knew about about Hinata and her secrets? No, there's no way Kurnai Sensei would let that happen if she knew. She wouldn't stay quiet. I agree with Kiba. She certainly did not know. We have to go talk to her regardless, so we can at least offer some support. First, Asuma Sensei. Now this. Kurnai Sensei must be having a rough time. Naruto gave them a solemn nod, and they left. Sasuke, Karin, Sugetsu, and Jugo rested in a cave. Karin, it's time, Sasuke said with a casual tone. Karin beamed in happiness, pulling her sleeve up. She had been healing Sasuke constantly after the fight against Hokage and her minions. The curse mark almost destroyed his body and the damage was vast. But thanks to her special healing ninjutsu, he was recovering well. Sasuke bit into her arm and Karin moaned as her chakra flowed to him. Do you really have to make that noise every time he bites you? So he to asked, rolling his eyes. You idiot! Have you ever been bitten like that before? It really hurts! That moan of yours is not of someone that's suffering. It may be painful, but you're enjoying yourself beyond belief, you degenerate! Shut up, Suigetsu! Sasuke took his mouth off Karin's arm. His skin still had a gray hue, and several veins were popped all around his body from the excessive curse mark usage. Stop antagonizing her, Suigetsu. I have to recover fully before we find Itachi. You know, if you have to recover so bad, Badly, we could at least stay in a proper inn to have some better rest. Don't be a fool, we've talked about this. Suigetsu, we're in the land of fire right now. We're all wanted here, especially Sasuke. We can't just show ourselves so lightly, Jugo said, communicating with birds. They tell me there are no ninjas in the area. We should be safe here for now. Even still, when we get to the south of the land of fire, we'll have to start interrogating people and stuff, right? Naturally. But until then, we'll stay hidden. Why couldn't he have just given you the exact location, though? South is is almost as vague as it can get. It is indeed strange. By south of the Land of Fire, I can only assume Mitachi meant the Blazing Horn region, the Great Land of Fire Peninsula that borders Land of Tea in the south, right? Jugo asked. That is my assumption, although that's still a massive amount of land to cover. That's what I'm saying, it's so freaking vague! If he went through all that trouble to tell you about his location, why not just be specific so he can get there quick? I mean, apparently he wants to fight. Itachi is the worst creature to ever inhabit this world. He may be planning something other than just killing me. We must be on our guard. That's alright, Sasuke, I'll be here for you, Karin said, rubbing her body against his. I still feel sluggish, even after several days of you healing me. Can't you heal me any faster, Karin? She blushed. Well, actually, I can. Then why didn't you do it? Karin's face became beet red. Well, um, yes, you know, the flux of healing chakra I can emit becomes more intense if it's drained closer to my chakra core. In other words, the healing ninjutsu gets more powerful the closer you bite from my heart. If you did that, your body should heal faster because the chakra will be more intense. <laughs> that's just desperation, Karin. Come on. It's true. That's how my jutsu works. Why didn't you say so before? <laughs> because I don't want to do that in front of Jugo and especially Suigetsu. He's going to stare. If you want to do it, Sasuke, we could go to somewhere more private. What? Hell no, I want to see that. Do it right here. Shut up, you pervert. Suigetsu is right. We need not concern ourselves with such futile matters. But Sasuke... 
Okay, I I'm embarrassed. If you're embarrassed to contribute to my cause, then you may leave. Sasuke's cold tones sent shivers down Karin's spine. His serene demeanor contrasts her frantic and erratic moves, but Karin breathed in deeply and steeled herself. She couldn't just leave, she had to be with Sasuke. So Karin pulled down the collar of her robes, exposing the middle of her chest, which was littered with human bite scars. She was careful not to expose her breasts, so especially with Suigetsu there. Sasuke bit her chest without any warning, as casually as he bit his rations. Karin let out the loudest moan of her life, as a thick stream of green chakra flowed from her chest to Sasuke's mouth and then body. Karin could barely contain her most primal instincts. She entered a trance-like state. The things she wished to do with Sasuke, or rather, the things she wished Sasuke would do to her all surfaced to her mind's eye. She prayed that that moment would last forever. <laughs> Look at her face! Look at her face! Careful, Sasuke! If you keep on doing this, she'll die of dehydration! Suigetsu cackled in laughter. That woke Karin up to reality. Her most beautiful daydream to the most heinous creature she'd ever met. That stupid white hair brat. Shut up, Suigetsu! Karin, Karin, you shouldn't be screaming. You should enjoy yourselves to the fullest. This is the closest you'll ever get to doing anything thing with Sasuke. I'm, 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 I'm not trying to do anything with him. Your face was saying something else. Sasuke kept on biting Karin's chest, draining her chakra with an emotionless expression. He wasn't bothered at all by the two bickering about Sasuke himself. His skin was slowly returning to its regular shade, and the bulged out veins receded. Talk about a convenient jutsu for you. <laughs> for your information, this is something very normal. Sasuke is not even close to being the first person to do it. Oh, well. Well, it doesn't change the fact that this will be the furthest you'll ever get with Sasuke. You simply lack what it takes. What do you mean? What it takes to be appealing to Sasuke. Suigetsu. Sasuke kept calm, utterly unfazed by what they were discussing. I am very appealing, thank you very much. Well, let's just say you lack volume from behind. That's not something you can compensate for, really. You either have it or you don't. Suigetsu, stop. Huh? Why would that matter? It's just what Sasuke likes, right Sasuke? Sasuke said nothing. He may be feigning ignorance right now, but I know his taste, right Sasuke? Big bottom, pink hair, just like Sakura. Sasuke's face contracted against his will and he bit into Karin's flesh with much more force than necessary, drawing blood. Karin moaned even harder than before and Sasuke recoiled, recomposing himself. That blabbering dog freak. Sasuke mumbled as he wiped Karin's blood from his lips. What? Who's Sakura? Who is she? Who's that? No one, Sasuke said, but Suigetsu giggled. I want to know, please tell me. I, I I, have the right to know. Forget it, Karin, Sasuke said again. He made a fist and squeezed it. It seems that healing was way more effective than I thought it would be. I'm almost 100% now. We'll do it again tomorrow and continue our journey to the Blazing Horn. Suigetsu showed his tongue to Karin with a smirk. She punched him in the face, exploding his head into water and went to her sleeping bag. Suigetsu's head reformed itself casually, and he kept on smirking at Karin. The corpses of Fu and Han laid on the cave ground. The ghetto statue overlooked them, as the Akatsuki had just finished sealing both the five and seven tails. Itachi, Kisame, Deidara, and Tobi were presently standing on the ghetto Mazu's fingers, while Zetsu, Konan, and the leader were holograms. This one took longer than I thought. <laughs> it cannot be avoided. With Kakuzu, Sorcery, and Hidan dead, it will take longer now, especially when sealing two beasts at the same time. What? Now, should I go after the nine or the eight tails? Dater asked. The eight tails is much too sheltered by the cloud village, and the nine tails must be the final tail beast sealed. Besides, that's Itachi's Jinchuriki. The eight tails belong to Sasori, but he is no longer here. <laughs> I guess that'll be my tail beast then because I replaced Mr. Sasori, right? <laughs> we should just go with the flow then. I have unfinished business with my younger brother. I will be meeting him soon. Is that wise, Itachi? He's already killed Orochimaru and gathered a team for the sole purpose of exterminating you. Orochimaru is nothing compared to me. And this battle has been written in our destinies for a decade. I will see it through. No! I was the one who's gonna take down Orochimaru. So I'm gonna be the one taking Sasuke down. As revenge, he'll pay for what he's done. Dater 
Kira, if you fight Sasuke, you will die. None of your jutsu will work against the Sharingan. You bastard! Calm yourself, Deidara. We shan't take unnecessary risks. If that's Itachi's fight, let it be his fight. But it, it would be much more fun and even safer if we all went after Sasuke, you know? Kinda like we go after the Jinchuriki? Itachi stared at Toby after he said that. Besides, that'll take a lot of work off Deidara Senpai's shoulders. He's been working like a slave. So I thought we could all pitch in and that he wouldn't die of exhaust. Shut up, Toby! I see your point. And perhaps you offer some some wisdom, Toby. We should combine our efforts to eliminate Sasuke. If he killed Orochimaru, then he certainly is a formidable threat. Sasuke Uchiha also defeated another son in Jiraiya in all-out combat. Black Zetsu said. When did that happen? When we were sealing the two beasts. Is Jiraiya dead? It appears he survived. There was also a coup attempt in the Leaf Village. Apparently the Nine Tails fought against the Copy Ninja and defeated an entire army single-handedly. Then we cannot take him lightly either. Why did he fight the copy ninja though? It appears he may have been the one to launch the coup attempt, though it failed. That's odd. I thought the copy ninja wasn't the betrayer type. <laughs> Leave politics do not concern us. Itachi, where will you fight your brother? Itachi paused for an instant, closing his eyes. In the southern region of the land of fire, I have not yet decided when or where exactly yet. So he knows about the general location at least. Yes. Very well. Sasuke's a direct threat to our organization. Deidara and Toby, you must also go there with the goal to eliminate Sasuke Uchiha. Then why don't we all join forces? I doubt Sasuke would have much of a chance against the four of us. <laughs> Over my dead body, I will be the one to take him down. My art alone will prevail. Kisame Senpai, I don't think it will be smart to get on Deidara Senpai's way. He gets really scared when it comes to his kitsch. What did you say? Nothing, 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 senpai. I also would prefer to fight him alone. Yes, we should all try to face him alone. The winner takes it all. So what are you betting, Toby? Honestly, I don't have anything. <laughs> you are a funny guy. Very well, then. The four of you head to the blazing horn. But before that, Kisame, I will need you to use that jutsu again. The organization is running low on funds. The loss of Kaksu has generated this financial problem we must solve. I can do that, but if we keep on fooling the black market dealers like that, we will soon no longer be trusted. <laughs> Not to worry. We will soon have collected all tail beasts, and then we shall no longer require their money. Leave the payment at one of the gathering spots. Zetsu will collect it once you're done with the exchange. Understood. You're dismissed, the leader said, as his hologram faded with Zetsu's and Conan's, and the ghetto mazo puffed away in white smoke. Itachi, Kisami, Tobi, and Deidara left the cave, emerging onto to the unsurprising rainy weather of the Land of Rain. Kisame used his Samehara as a makeshift umbrella, hoisting it above his and Itachi's heads. Deidara then created a large clay bird. Well, Itachi, I'll get going. I have a younger brother to kill. Huh? He said, jumping on top of the large bird. I will not remember you. You shall swallow those clever words of yours. I will claim him before you. My art has surpassed the Sharingan. Suit yourself. Come on, Toby, hop on! Before Toby jumped on the bird, Itachi's arm eyes met his gaze. For a moment, the only sound they could hear was the rain. But eventually Toby stumbled on top of the bird and Deidara took off, disappearing in the horizon. We must get going too, Itachi. We have a fun stop to make before the blazing horn. <laughs> Itachi leaned against a tree, panting. What is it? You never seemed that tired after a biju ceiling. Unlike you, Kisame, I do not possess nigh infinite chakra reserves. Were you hiding your tiredness from the others then? Something like that. I am Honored you trust me enough to show me your vulnerable side, Itachi. We should take a little rest then. No, I can continue. We must make it to the Blazing Horn sooner rather than later. In the late afternoon of the following day, Tsunari summoned Naruto to her office. He was tired from a long day of training with Captain Yamato, but eager to learn what the Hokage wanted to tell him. Naruto told her everything that happened, from the Takeshijo bout, to the weird Ambo member, to the fight with Kakashi and the army of mercenaries, as well as he could remember. Once he finished, Tsunari let out a loud sigh. <sighs> well done, Naruto. Although you could have not gotten yourself into that Takeshijo, that will give me a world of headache with a feudal lord. 
Lord. It wasn't my fault. I didn't even know what that thing was before Hiyashi told me. And to be honest, I'm glad I did it. Hiyashi was nothing but awful to everyone, especially his own clan. I see. I had heard most of this information through other sources. But now, we must go settle things down. Follow me. Where are we going? You'll see. They left the Hokage office building as night fell and made their way through the village. Many people stared at them. Their faces showed respect. Some even showed admiration towards Naruto. It was something new. Naruto didn't even know how to react. But eventually, Naruto saw a familiar building in the distance. The memories of that place made him feel cold. The Konoha prison facility. They enter the building together. This place should be familiar to you, Tsunari smirked. Uh, what do you mean? Do you really think you'd be able to sneak past the Yambu, Naruto? I don't know what you're talking about. I know you infiltrate this building to talk to Hinata. Tsunari looked at him with a mix of intimidation and pride in her face. Naruto began to sweat as Tsunari led Naruto through the prison facility hallways. Ibiki thought he'd try that. He saw you and Hinata way back in the day during the Chunin exams. Apparently she was trying to help you cheat, but you didn't accept it. And he thought you'd be head strong enough to try something stupid like that. What do you mean he knew? Why did he even let me in then? He thought you could perhaps extract more intel from Hinata, more than the Ambu could. It didn't work, but it was worth a shot. What the hell? So all those things we did, for what? For nothing? Why didn't he just ask me to go and talk to her? If you knew you were being watched, would you really have poured your heart out? Yes, that was stupid of them. Okay, I guess you're right. You're definitely not a conventional ninja. Maybe he should have considered that. This infuriates me. Hey, I'm the one who's supposed to be furious. Do you have any idea of how many laws you broke that night? And you even had Sakura and Nino helping you out. I never expected those two to be such delinquents. Oh, can you please not lash out on them? I was the one who asked them to come along. Ah, it's too late for that, I'm afraid. I did that earlier today. They looked like they'd seen a ghost. Naruto and Tsunade kept on going deeper into the facility. It wasn't the way Naruto went through to get Hinata. It seemed like a different ward. You may be wondering why I even took you here. Well, kinda. I'm still upset though. You're changing subjects. Oh, shush. You wanna be Hokage one day, don't you? Yeah? So, tonight, you'll be participating in an extremely important meeting. A meeting way above the pay grade of a Genin. Take that as a boot camp for your Hokage days. So that means you're gonna train me to be Hokage? Like you're teaching me to become your successor? Sure, I guess you can see it that way. Let's see how well you'll perform tonight. It will be a brainstorm meeting of sorts. I'll be analyzing your performance, Naruto. Don't act too out of line. Alright! Eventually, after passing a few Ambu guards who nodded at Tsunari along the way, they reached a secluded cell. Kakashi sat behind those bars. He didn't wear his leaf vest or headband and kept his Sharingan eye closed. The cell was plain. The only distinguishing feature was a large ceiling symbol on the ground to prevent the prisoners from escaping. The middle bars were thick and Naruto could swear they had a faint aura of light around them, mixing with the faint moonlight that came through the small window. Lady Tsunari, Naruto, Kakashi nodded. Sensei! Kakashi will be joining the meeting. This is actually a perfect location to hold it, as it's one of the most secure places in the village. It didn't take long for three men to enter the room. Ibiki, Inoichi, and to Naruto's surprise, Jiraiya. Perfect sage, it all healed up? Well, Tsunari took good care of me. I'm still not 100%, but I have to thank you again, Naruto. You really saved my life good this time. And I think I also broke a new record. Survived two Chidoris through the chest in less than a week. That's gotta be some sort of achievement, right? It's gonna go to the Leaf Village records. Jiraiya laughed, but Kakashi lowered his head. Well, gentlemen, the purpose of this meeting is to find out, or at least to determine some suspects as to what the hell happened in this village four nights ago. I brought Naruto in because, like it or not, he was the protagonist of everything that happened that evening and thought he may have some insight to offer us. Ibiki and Inoichi, let's begin with your reports. We looked into Kakashi's mind and interrogated him thoroughly. It appears Kakashi truly believed that he should be the Hokage and take over the Leaf Village to get rid of its weakness. To him, killing Lord Jiraiya was a vital step to accomplish that. He also knew that there was an invading army that would help him in the coup attempt. No, that can't be it! It was some sort of mind control! Calm yourself, Naruto. However, these feelings of betrayal only started showing in Kakashi's psyche about three days before the coup attempt. And after our extremely thorough examination, it appears Kakashi no longer has such feelings and is no longer under the influence of whatever jutsu that was. Naruto appears to have been the catalyst to break him out of that. I went very deep into Kakashi's mind and found nothing but loyalty to the Leaf Village. It was as though his mind had a comprehensive shift once Naruto managed to wake him out of that state, Inoichi said. Oh, by the way, you might want to change the place of your stash, Kakashi. Ibiki said with a smirk. Stash? 
What stash? Kakashi blushed from within the cell. I think he's referring to my book stash. Hey, <laughs> Kakashi, you sly dog, Jiraiya said. All right, all right. So we are certain that Kakashi was under some sort of mind control. That's a good thing. I am truly sorry for falling for such a terrible trick, especially for what I did to you, Lord Jiraiya. Kakashi bowed his head. I also killed an innocent medic ninja. It wasn't you, Kakashi. It was whoever was controlling you who did it. Inoichi said. Another piece of evidence, if we even need more, was that I myself was under some similar method of mind control. What do you mean, Green Tsunade? Listen carefully, I'll tell you what happened in the Land of Crystals. Tsunade then proceeded to tell everything that transpired during that fateful mission. Naruto was shocked to learn Sasuke fought against Tsunade alongside five other ninjas at the same time, including Kurutsuchi. So you found Sasuke? Why? Why did he fight you? We fought him because I wanted to bring him back, but he was just way too powerful. Unbelievably so. And still, he wasn't after any of us, and he actively avoided killing us, so he may not be that far gone, Naruto. We may have a chance. Well, it didn't look like that when he shoved the Chidori in my back. Well, he also did avoid a fatal blow when he did so. I knew it. I knew Sasuke wasn't evil like that. It had to be some misunderstanding. I mean, of course he would fight against you if you go against what he wants to do, but I just have to make him see through things. That may not be as easy as you think, Naruto. Well, the reason why Sasuke fought against us isn't the main point right now. The thing is, I was compelled to go to the Land of Crystals. I felt like it was the right thing to do, even though I normally wouldn't in a situation like this. When the Hokage leaves the village for a period of time, like it or not, it leaves it exposed. And it was not the right decision, especially after what happened to the waterfall village. I also had the urge to go to taverns and drink a lot during the trip to the Land of Crystals. One could say I wasn't taking it very seriously, but when I was doing so, I felt that I was just doing the right thing. Like it was natural for me to do those things, and I was right. Pretty much the same feeling Kakashi had when he attacked Jiraiya, only much more subtle. Ironically, Sasuke was the one who woke me from my stupor. After he said he stabbed Jiraiya with a Chidori and that he would die because I wasn't in the village. That snapped something in my mind and reverted me back to normal. This is exactly what happened to me when Naruto said those things. So we can probably assume this was the same jutsu used by the same person, or at least two people that are working together with the same goals. Inoichi said, Don't be too hasty. We must consider all the facts before reaching any conclusions. We first have to try and deduce what this jutsu even was, Jiraiya said. When I was inside Kakashi's mind, it didn't feel like direct mind control. As a Yamanaka, I would certainly know how to identify it, and it didn't resemble our jutsu at all. There was no other presence permeating his thoughts. Kakashi was making decisions on his own volition. However, it was as if Kakashi's own psyche was modified to make such decisions. Decisions that would go completely against his character. Regular mind control genjutsu is also out of the question. First, because Kakashi would certainly be able to resist it, and second, because there were several moments when he fought Naruto that he would have been broken out of it. Tsunade said, Yeah, Kakashi-sensei even told me that during the fight that it wasn't Genjutsu and that he was doing those things because he really believed in them. I didn't believe that. I thought Kakashi-sensei was under some sort of jutsu, yeah. And I am thankful you didn't believe that, Naruto. So is there a jutsu that could do something as invasive yet subtle to Shinobi of Kakashi and Tsunade's caliber? I only know one jutsu capable of that. Kakashi said in a somber tone. Which one? Koto Amatsukami. Koto Ama- what? Koto Amatsukami. One of the most powerful genjutsus to ever exist. That's what I was thinking. Jiraiya said, sighing. That's not possible, though. Shisui died a decade ago, Inoichi said. Just because Nochiha died, it doesn't mean their dojutsu will die with them. Kakashi said, tapping his closed Sharingan eye with his index finger. Wait, ho hold on. Can someone explain? Shisui was a powerful member of the Uchiha clan. He possessed the Mangekyo Sharingan and could cast a genjutsu through it called Koto Koto Amatsukami, a genjutsu like none other. Unlike regular genjutsu, which affects the target's sensations for the duration of the genjutsu, Koto Amatsukami altered the target's mental state for an undetermined amount of time. Shisui could control people without them ever knowing they were being controlled, because they just believed that they were doing the things they were doing on their own accord. However, it was Koto Amatsukami, which could alter their mind, their mental focus, their outlook in life, personality, general goals, personal philosophy and beliefs, and you would simply be unaware of it, Kakashi said. As far as we know, the only way to break out of Koro Matsukami was for an external agent to show you the incongruencies of your current actions and beliefs to your old self, which is what you did to Kakashi and Sasuke did to Tsunade, Jiraiya said. And unlike most Sharingan Genjutsu, Koro Matsukami does not require eye contact. The target only needs to be in range, and you can cast the Jutsu, so I couldn't even notice what was happening. The perfect Jutsu for a situation like this.
this if the user is very careful. So it had to be this jutsu, right? I mean, it fits perfectly. Well, it could be some other type of jutsu trying to pass itself as Kuromatsukami in order to confuse us. Or simply a jutsu that acts similarly to it. But yes, it seems to be the most likely candidate at this time, Kakashi said. The only problem is that Shisui died even before the Uchiha clan massacre. That may be true, but Shisui's body was never found. Itachi was linked with Shisui's death. They were very close, but obviously being very close to Itachi never stopped him from killing you. The Ambu believes Itachi killed Shisui before the massacre because he believed Shisui was the only one who could stop him. So, he used the jutsu on Kakashi sensei and on Granny Tsunari using this Shisui guy's eye? Possibly. Knowing that we never found Shisui's body and assuming the jutsu used on us was indeed Koto Matsukami, I only see three real possibilities. Number one, Itachi, having killed Shisui, collected his eyes and disposed of his body. And now he has access to Shisui's jutsu, which he used against us to try and undermine the leaf village, Kakashi said. This could fit. Itachi did say he wanted to destroy this village, so he could be preparing for that. Number two, some other party collected Shisui's eyes and disposed of his body. Someone like Danzo, who could have just tried to launch a coup and become the new Hokage. Yeah, I think it's him. It's gotta be that old bastard. Number three, Shisui didn't die and is still alive. And that's the reason why we never found his body. Now, for some reason, he is working against the Leaf Village. All these possibilities are terrible, Inoichi said. It was Danzo. I mean, it could have been Itachi, but that moldy cockroach, it was him. He brainwashed Hinata and now he tried to take over the village. I agree with Naruto's assessment. Danzo is my prime suspect, Jiraiya said. And hold on a second. I think I have proof that Danzo's behind this thing. Remember when we were given the report about the mission to the Land of Whirlpools? Danzo came into the room and I tried to kill him and didn't succeed because I did something weird and substituted or whatever. He just disappeared and then he kicked me on Granny Tsunari. But it was after that that Granny Tsunari started to act weird and saying, I will have to go to the Land of Crystals and stuff like that. Why would it happen just after Danzo showed up all of a sudden? Huh, that's not exactly proof, but it's a very good clue now. Naruto and I didn't think of that. That is true. Lady Tsunari didn't even mention the Land of Crystals before he showed up. And he always has one of his eyes covered by bandages, so maybe he's just covering it just like Akashi Sensei covers his Sharingan, so he's hiding that Shisui's guy's eye right in front of us. It's in his socket. That has to be it. If you don't need eye contact, then he cast the juice on Granny Tsunari right when he showed up in the room, but we were distracted because he tried to kill him. That is not a bad theory. And if it's true, it's not too hard to uncover it. You cannot disguise the showering gun with a transformation jutsu. So if somehow he got a glimpse of what's behind those bandages, we would see whether or not he has a showering gun there. I will take that up to the Ambu for them to conduct their investigation. It's not proof yet, but it's a good place to start. I questioned Danzo two days ago. I used all tricks I knew, but couldn't get anything out of him that would incriminate the guy. Though that man was trained to resist even my methods of interrogation, Ibiki said. Why don't you just penetrate his mind like you did to Kakashi Sensei? It's illegal to do that to a citizen of the land of fire that hasn't been convicted of any crimes. Of course he could volunteer himself to do so, but he obviously didn't, Tsunari said. Screw that! Just punch his stupid face and make him do it! Naruto, that is not how a Hokage acts. You're innocent until proven guilty, not the other way around. Even people that you may dislike or hate. But what about Hinata? What he did to her had to be a crime, going behind your back and turning her into a spy without you knowing Granny Tsunari? Technically, Danzo didn't break any laws when he did that. It's a illegal for a leaf ninja to join shinobi organizations outside of the leaf village without the Hokage's consent, but the Roots Ambu is a leaf village organization, so he used a loophole to get around that. But what she did to Kakashi Sensei, she tried to kill him! That was Hinata's crime, not Danzo's. We don't have any proof that he ordered her to do that. Besides, we couldn't infiltrate her mind as thoroughly as we could infiltrate Kakashi's. The Root Ambu has powerful methods to avoid mind infiltration. Kakashi, on the other hand, cooperated and let us do as we pleased. Inoichi said. Still, it was Danzo. I just know it. You may be right, but we have absolutely no proof. The Ambu is investigating it, but I doubt they'll find anything on Danzo. The best thing we have that could link Danzo to the coup was that someone raised an anti-sensorial barrier around the hospital so no one would notice what Kakashi was doing there. It's the reason why Naruto didn't have any reinforcements. So the enemy had to be inside the leaf village to raise such a barrier. They managed to do the same thing to conceal the entire mercenary army's presence until they were very 
close to the village, and they also made sure the section of the wall the army would approach was unguarded. We confirmed that several wall sentinels were put under Genjutsu, as well as other ninjas that were heading towards the hospital during the fight, as well as to the wall when Arit was calling up reinforcements. So someone was diverting our ninjas away from the fight, Ibiki said. Not only that, but they had to transfer the army close to the leaf village, getting through the land of fire without being noticed. That requires a lot of skill, Jiraiya said. Yeah, and there was someone destroying my shadow clones when I tried to send some out of the hospital grounds to call for reinforcements. This entire operation required a lot of experience and expertise in infiltration tactics, as well as knowledge about the leaf village's layout. This sounds like something the root Ambu would be great at, but the Akatsuki would also be capable of doing so. Itachi has infiltrated the village before, and he knows this place well. Also, who knows the types of jutsu the Akatsuki may have access to. They could have been the ones pulling the strings in the village, just like the root could have been too. But still, this leaves us with two prime suspects. Danzo with the root, or Itachi with the Akatsuki, Kakashi said. Or perhaps they could be even working together. Itachi did missions for Danzo when he was a leaf ninja. Maybe they still communicate and are in league trying to undermine the leaf village, Tsunade said. Also, leaf village communications were blocked, so they couldn't reach Lady Tsunade in the Land of Crystals, Ibiki said. Yeah, they really thought of everything and wanted to make sure Tsunade wouldn't be present. And then, they tried to incriminate Kakashi, trying to paint him as a would-be traitor that craved the title of Hokage and manipulated him into trying to kill me. This would kill two birds with one stone, Kakashi and myself would be taken out of the fight. And then when you put the mercenary army into the equation, Danzo could have used that chance to defeat the army with his forces and claim the Hokage title for himself. After Kakashi and I were dead and Tsunade was far away, the leadership of the village would fall into his lap. Although if Danzo was behind it, he could have used that chance to free Hinata from her imprisonment. I doubt he would. That would have made it too obvious that it was him. But if it wasn't for Naruto, this coup attempt would probably have succeeded. Wait, hold on a second. If Danzo can use that Koto whatever, then maybe he could use the same jutsu to force Hinata into obeying him. That's it. That's why she's so different now. I'm afraid not. You would have broken her out of it by now, Naruto, just like you did to Kakashi. Hinata seems to have been brainwashed the old-fashioned way, Ibiki said. Oh yeah, you were listening. I almost forgot. Ibiki gave Naruto an embarrassed smile and looked at Tsunade. Yeah, I told him. He ought to know when he is in way over his head. Other than Danzo and Itachi, we could theorize about other villages being behind it, but it seems much less likely. So we should take care of the two prime suspects for now, Jiraiya said. The Ambu Corpse will continue to investigate Danzo and the roots, but it will be hard to do anything without proof. So the obvious target now is Itachi Uchiha. Yeah, and if Sasuke is going after him too, we could kill two birds with one stone. It won't be easy, Naruto. Sasuke beat me and Tsunade. That's why I intend on sending a grand battalion after Itachi. Nice! So, you actually know where he is? The reason why Sasuke was in the Land of Crystals was to gather intel on Itachi's location. He managed to do so, but Shino also got that intel. And a threat from Itachi. He said that he would kill Sasuke and acquire a power that would allow him to destroy the Leaf Village and wipe it off the map by himself. That's why he could have been trying to undermine us with this weird coup attempt. That bastard! Where is he? In the southern region of the Land of Fire, the Blazing Horn. Coincidentally, or not so coincidentally, we've been getting reports of many disappearances in that region over the last few weeks. And even though I sent ninjas to investigate, they found nothing. I would bet Itachi and the Akatsuki are linked to these disappearances. We're gonna go down there and destroy him, and then we're gonna bring Sasuke back. No, destroying him won't be the objective. We must capture him alive so we can extract all the intel he knows about the Leaf Village coup and Danzo, and also the Akatsuki, of course. Which also means that you must find Sasuke and stop him from confronting Itachi, because if he does so, only two outcomes are possible. He'll either kill Itachi and his intel with him, or Itachi will kill Sasuke, and we don't want that to happen, do we, Naruto? No, we don't. Kakashi, how are you feeling? Recovered from your Mangekyo Sharingan usage? I'm feeling alright. My body's getting more used to that power. Very well then, you'll be the battalion lord for the mission. Sonari said, opening the cell and releasing Kakashi. He stepped out of the cell, but was bewildered. Is that wise, Lady Tsunade? After what happened to me? Yes. It'll be good for you to go on a mission like that to show everyone you're loyal to the Leaf Village and the Hokage trusts you. I'm obviously also sending you, Naruto. But I was gonna teach Naruto a new jutsu, Tsunade. One that could put him on par with Sasuke's power. I have to go, Pervy Sage. Really, you can teach me later. Naruto's right. Even though it'd be good for him to learn new technique, this mission is very much time-sensitive. We don't know for how long Itachi will be in the Blazing Horn. And if we don't send Naruto, 
Reptil, he'll probably go rogue and join the mission anyway. Uh, I guess you're right. Jiraiya sighed, but smiled. And I mean, I'm also really strong now. I should go because it can help, not just because I'm tagging along. Well, of course. I wouldn't send you otherwise. Present yourselves in my office tomorrow, first thing in the morning, for the mission briefing. You're dismissed. They all left the prison room, but Tsunade held Jiraiya by the hand, holding him back. Did you tell him? Not yet. Well, then, what are you waiting for? You almost died twice this week. Well, if two Chidori's didn't kill me, I guess I won't die anytime soon. Tsunade slapped him in the face. Tell him, she said, and left Jiraiya behind, rubbing his red cheek. One whole scene that I'm cutting out of the rewrites is that one when Sasuke visits the weird cat lady. It's just a weird scene that amounts to nothing. It has no bearing in any future events. It only serves to introduce weird characters, the cat lady and her daughter, and the lore that the Uchiha clan is connected to cats. Which is just way too goofy for cats to be the Uchiha clan animal. I guess the only thing that scene really does is to give the backstory of how Jugu got his clothes, but you don't really need that. Like, he got his clothes somewhere, it doesn't matter. You don't get a backstory as to how Suigetsu got his clothes because he was kind of naked the first time you saw him. So that scene does not exist in the rewrite. Early in the following morning, Itachi and Kisame approached a black market outpost. They were already in the land of fire, in the middle of a forest. The outpost in question was hidden behind the facade of a traveler's inn at a secluded land of fire road. They obviously didn't take the road to avoid detection. I think it's time for me to cast that jutsu. <laughs> Indeed. Kisame weaved hand signs. Water style. Perfect corpse mimicry. Kisame spat water, which took the shape of a human body, a dead one. The human body is comprised of of over 70% of water, and Kisame could manipulate water to such a high degree that it would take the shape of bone, muscle, and organs, mimicking human bodies perfectly down to their odor. The drawback for this jutsu was that it decayed back to regular water after a month, but it was an efficient way to sell fake corpses to the black market and get some quick money. Of course, ideally they would capture real bounties, but without Kakuzu, who was in charge of that, they didn't have time for it, especially now with the entire Blazing Horn assignment. And what he taught you had to do relating with Sasuke. Who did you create this time? An old Miss Jonin from the Terumi clan. He's worth 26 million Ryo. Should satisfy the leader for now. <laughs> you should go alone. I do not wish to be seen here. Very well. Kisame took the fake corpse to the back of the inn and returned about an hour later holding a suitcase in his hands. Now we just have to drop off the money and we can go take care of your business, Itachi. But I do wonder why the leader needs that much money. I can't help but to think he lives in a luxurious castle or something. Thing. <laughs> yes, I wonder why. Kisame, before we reach the Blazing Horn, I have a few favors to ask you. Naruto woke up pumped, knowing the mission that he would be heading on. Naruto arrived alongside the ninjas that would go to this vital mission. Kakashi, Sakura, Yamato, Kiba, Shino, Anko, Shikamaru, Ino, Choji, Tenten, Neji, and Rock Lee. With Naruto, they formed a 13-man battalion, composed of four individual three-man cells and Kakashi, the battalion lord. They all stood in front of Tsunade, who sat on her desk, hands clasped together on top of the table. You're all here for the next mission briefing. Before that, Sakura Haruno, Shikamaru Nara and Shino Aburame step forward. They got closer to Tsunade's desk. You three have performed exceptionally over a long period of time and showcased elite level abilities in all aspects of the shinobi art. Therefore, I, the fifth Hokage of the Leaf Village, grant you the rank of Jonin. May you continue to serve this village with excellence. Thank you, master, Sakura said, blushing. Yes, my lady, Shino said, unfaced. Shikamaru nodded. He was happy, but the promotion made him remember Asuma. Hey, that's really cool, guys! Lee said, showing the nice guy sign. You're a Jonin, Sakura! Naruto smiled. The three newly appointed Jonins returned to the group. Naruto Uzumaki, step forward, Tsunade said, and a wave of adrenaline hit Naruto. He was ecstatic. It finally happened. He would become a Chunin. It was only fair after everything he did during that coup attempt. Naruto stepped forward, barely containing his excitement. You have performed exceptionally during the recent crisis in our village. Therefore, I, the fifth Hokage, would like to extend my public appreciation for your efforts and let you know that your deeds that night will be accounted as a successful A-rank mission on your record, and of course, you will receive the appropriate compensation for it. Very well then, let's get to the briefing. Excuse me? Yes, Naruto? Aren't you forgetting something, Granny Tsunade? I don't believe I am. What about my promotion? Naruto, we've been through this already. You haven't passed the exams, and you're not at the age I give tuning promotions without a need to pass the exams. What? You just promoted Shikamaru Sakura and Shino to Jonin! They're my age! Yes, but they passed. 
passed the tuning exams. It doesn't make sense. Jonin is higher than Chunin. Obviously, it is. So why can't you just promote me too? If I were to promote you without passing the exams, people would see it as favoritism. Also, if I were to promote our youth without having them go through the Chunin exams and pass the Chunin exams, then the exams themselves would lose their prestige. I only consider promoting Ganons to Chunin without the exams after they turn 18. But that's older than the three you just promoted! Because the minimum age I consider to promote Chunins into the Jonin rank is 16. But that doesn't make sense! Why would the Jonin age be younger than the Chunin age? Because there are no Jonin exams. If you reach the Jonin level, then you'll be promoted if you are older than 16. It doesn't make sense. Why do I have to take a stupid exam? I have more important things to do. And you just promoted them before not promoting me to provoke me. I defeated an Akatsuki. I stopped Kakashi Sensei when he was mind controlled. And I beat an entire army of 5,000 people. Name one Chunin that could do that. I can name a Ganon. Who? You. Gah! Enough, Naruto. I may consider promoting you if you succeed on this upcoming mission. That's not fair. Life's hardly ever fair. Now to the briefing. All the other ninjas in the room tensed up. They were amused watching Naruto and Tsunade's exchange, especially those who were not as familiar with Naruto and his antics, because that interaction was so casual, almost like a mother scolding her son. But once Tsunade went back to business, that shut them all awake. This will be an S-rank mission. Never heard of a Genin going to an S-rank mission. Quiet, Naruto. Your primary task is to find and capture Itachi Uchiha alive. As you all know, he's the most heinous criminal and traitor in the history of our village, on top of being an Akatsuki member. We have reason to believe he's connected to the incident from a few days ago, and he also recently threatened to destroy the village entirely. His capture will provide us vital intel. Besides, it's about time we brought that man to justice. Thanks to Shino, we know he is somewhere in the Blazing Horn, the southern region of the Land of Fire. Not coincidentally, we've received many reports of disappearances around that region, and the previous teams I sent to investigate found nothing. But your battalion with six Jonins, a special Jonin, five Chunins, and Naruto is likely the most complete and powerful battalion I've ever sent on any mission during my time as Hokage. Kakashi will be the battalion lord and will lead you into the mission. You all have been briefed beforehand about every single piece of intel we have on the Akatsuki, including Itachi, thanks to the encounters we've had with them and also the notebook Kabuto gave Naruto. If you find any other Akatsuki members during this mission, capture them if possible, but eliminate them otherwise. There will also be other complicating factors. We have strong reason to believe that Sasuke will be pursuing Itachi at the same time as we are. He has gathered a team as well. You are not to kill Sasuke, but you must stop him from reaching Itachi. Sasuke's goal is to kill his older brother, and we need him alive. Now let's discuss the abilities and characteristics of Sasuke and his comrades. Tsunade, Kiba, and Shino all gave detailed accounts of what they saw in the Land of Crystals regarding Sasuke's jutsus as well as his teammates and their appearances. Sasuke has absorbed Orochimaru's powers. He's even stronger than when Team Kakashi encountered him during their mission to Tenchi Bridge. He bested Jiraiya and even myself in combat. So both Sasuke and Itachi should be treated as triple S class ninjas. The large size of your battalion is to make up the difference in strength. Do not engage those two Uchiha's with less than six of you together and ideally engage them with more than eight. Sasuke possesses Orochimaru's kin chain substitution so anything less than an instantly fatal blow will not kill him. If you fight Sasuke, I recommend you to use a mortal jutsu on him and force him to substitute. That will expend a lot of his chakra and turn the battle in your favor. Kakashi, I'll leave the rest to you. Prepare yourselves and assemble at the main gate in an hour for your departure. The battalion scattered. Naruto linger for a bit longer, facing Tsunade. I thought you were teaching me to be Hokage. I am. A Hokage must deal with hardship, Naruto. You cannot just cut corners. So you're not getting a promotion today. Now go. You have an Akatsuki to capture. Right. Naruto said, leaving as well. Jiraiya jumped into the Hokage's office from the window. I told you didn't have to eavesdrop on us. You could have just been present for the briefing. Nah, I didn't want to distract anyone. I wish I could go on the mission, though. You're not totally healed yet. I know. And I also have something else to do. Really? What is it? I'll tell you later when I'm healed. Cryptic much? I would prefer not to reveal my intentions beforehand in case someone is watching us. Especially after what we discussed last night. But still, Tsunade, you should just promote Naruto. Come on. He's probably the strongest member of that battalion 
Battalion and has the lowest rank. If any other ninja had done what Naruto did, you'd have promoted him a long time ago. After everything he did to the village, nobody would be upset for you promoting him without the tuning exams. I know, I treat him like a jonin already, but making it more difficult for him to become a tuning will make him work even harder. He'll also not take any promotions for granted. Besides, have you told him yet? I'll do it before he leaves the village. You better. Naruto readied himself in his bedroom, assembling weapons and supplies, and putting on his leaf village cloak. It was time. He left for the main village gate under heavy clouds. The chilly wind hit his face, signaling the upcoming arrival of rain. Naruto, Jiraiya said from behind him. Perfect Sage! I'm about to leave for the mission! It's gonna be my first S-Class mission, and that old hag didn't even promote me to tune in. I'm sure she will eventually, but I have something to tell you, Naruto. Something important. Something that I've been hiding from you for over 16 years. Huh? And I know you may hate me after. I tell you the story, but I must. What is it? Listen, before you were born, your parents named me your grandfather. In other words, I was the one who was supposed to take care of you should anything happen to your parents. Really? Yes, really. But as you very well know, you grew up alone and only met me when you were over 12. I mean, I always figured you were really busy investigating the Akatsuki and other dangerous things. Sure, I did some of that, but I never came back to the village, not even once, for over 12 years, knowing full well my my pupil son, my godson, was growing up alone, having to carry a tail beast demon inside of him. There's a reason why I never came back, Naruto. Jiraiya began to cry. Naruto had never seen him doing that. I was afraid and ashamed. I knew there were risks involving your birth. I knew things could get bad, and still, in the evening of your birth, I chose to drown myself in alcohol, rationalizing to myself that I was just celebrating the birth of my godson, but I was just trying to escape another responsibility. Minato and Kushina would take care of you. You, everything will be fine. I woke up in the morning to a burned village and a terrible hangover. I was so drunk during that evening that I didn't even register the most devastating event in the history of our village. I wasn't there to help the citizens in need. I wasn't there to help your mother and I wasn't there to help your father. I was just passed out drunk in a tavern. And then I made my way to the wreckage, eventually seeing Minato and Kushina dead. And then your little baby face, so cute and fragile and already carrying the weight of the world in your shoulders. I just couldn't handle it. I was afraid of ever facing you, of ever talking to you. How could the man who let his parents die raise you? The man who was drunk while your parents were fighting for their lives. I fled and I rationalized that by saying I wouldn't be a good influence on a young child. But I knew Minato would have wanted me to be with you. That you didn't deserve to grow up alone in a village that hated you. But because of my weakness, I didn't have the courage to show my face for over 12 years. I have been nothing but a great failure my entire life. I failed at saving my best friend, my students, and most of all, I failed you. Couldn't make you strong enough to bring your friend back, and I also failed in doing so myself. You just had to fight for my life. You've been the best student I could ever have hoped for. Every time you pushed yourself past your limit, I felt a step of guilt, knowing I was the reason why you grew up feeling so much pain. So the only thing I can do now is ask for your forgiveness. Jiraiya kneeled in front of Naruto, tears streaming down his face, and he touched his forehead on the ground. Naruto felt his knees crying. He hoisted to Jiraiya up and hugged him. They both sobbed, kneeling on an unassuming leaf village street as rain began to pour. There's nothing to forgive. I love you, pervy sage. Jiraiya sobbed even harder. I don't deserve this. Mistakes don't make who you are. It's how you deal with them that matters. You did make me stronger and you protected from the Akatsuki for years. I couldn't ask for a better master. I love you too, Naruto. They held their embrace for another whole minute under the rain and finally rose back up. When you come back, I will teach you that jutsu I told you about in the hospital. And you'll become much more powerful than me. When I come back, I'll have Sasuke and Itachi. That will show Granny Tsunade. You'll fight against Genjutsu users. Don't forget Saikichi. And don't try to take them on alone. I know, yeah. And be careful with the Nine Tails' chakra. Yeah, I know. I got this. Naruto touched Jiraiya's shoulder. He nodded. And Jiraiya nodded back with a smile. Naruto jumped away, heading to the main village gate. He looked back at Pervy Sage. And his fist was raised up in the air, cheering Naruto on. Team Heavy walked under the rain, heading towards the blazing horn. Suigetsu, tell me who that Sakura is, Karin whispered. Well, let me think about it a little bit. Um, no? Oh, come on, tell me no! Even if I told you, what would you even give me in exchange? Information is not cheap, you know. I would not 
kill you. Ha ha, very funny. Karin stomped his right foot, which exploded into water and made him fall. You two, stop bickering, Sasuke said, annoyed. The four ninjas reached the cliffside, and Sasuke squeezed his fists with power. Karin had healed him again using the chest method earlier that morning. Now I am fully recovered. Using your chest was much more effective, Karin. She blushed. Don't be cocky. That's just for, for a special occasion. And stop abusing the curse mark like that. If the damage is too severe, I may not be able to heal it. Or you could just die. I am aware. Sasuke breathed in deeply, staring in the distance. Let's do this. When Naruto arrived at the gate, all of their battalion members were there already. You're late, Naruto! Kiba shouted, followed by Akamaru's barking. Sorry, guys! So, in the rewrite, instead of Team Kurunai plus Team 7 going on the Itachi Pursuit mission, Hinata won't go because she's in prison, obviously, and Sai won't go because he doesn't exist. Rather, all the Konoha 11 members, except for Hinata, will go along with Kakashi, Yamato, and Anko. So we can try and give all those characters some love that they didn't get in Naruto Shippuden. Rain pelted to the battalion as they stood, ready to depart. Akamaru hissed while Kiba held a kunai in his hand. They were angry and eager to redeem themselves after their shameful failure in the land of crystals. Shino carried four insect gourds and was calm and collected as usual. Choji and Ino stood side by side. Ino leaned an affectionate arm on him. Shikamaru squatted down, the smoke of his cigarette mixed with the rain, training a raging white stream, but he was calm and determined. That wouldn't be his first and not even his second battle out with the Akatsuki. Rock Lee clenched his fists in excitement, hyping himself and the whole battalion up for the mission. Neji, Kakashi, and Sakura seemed calm, although those three jonins had a lot to prove in this mission. Yamato held up an umbrella to prevent the rain from hitting his scarred face. Water didn't exactly hurt it, but he felt uncomfortable feeling the cold touch of water upon it after it suffered so much heat. Anko snacked on her classic sweet beans as a second breakfast. This rain won't be enough to cool me down. I'm too fired up. Kiba said. Let's do this, guys! Let's go! Let the vortex of the youth explode! Lee screamed. A normal travel time to the Blazing Horn is three days, but we'll be cutting that by half. We'll be rushing down there. Neji, Kiba, and Shino, you'll take turns scouting. We shouldn't encounter any resistance or enemies inside the Land of Fire itself, at least until we reach the Blazing Horn, but it's never bad to be prepared. Until we reach the Horn, we will move as a tight formation, and when we get there, I will command how we're going to proceed proceed with a search, Kakashi said. All right, people, let's go! Naruto shouted, and the battalion jumped, heading to the Blazing Horn in the pursuit of Itachi Uchiha. Watch part 44 of the rewrite right here, and please don't forget to like this video if you got this far, it really helps a lot with the algorithm and stuff. Subscribe if you haven't done so already, and ring those notifications so you always get the rewrites and the way they come out. Comment down below what you thought about this episode, and thank you so much for watching.